Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. And today we're gonna to talk about the release 0.21 as of early May. So there's been some significant improvements with FreeCAD and features that have been added. And I thought it'd be good to make a video of some of them, which I find extremely interesting and useful in my day-to-day -day use of FreeCAD. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. So if you haven't looked at the release notes, you can find them on the wiki freakhead.org, release underscore notes underscore 0.21. And these are weekly builds that you can download and use. Please understand that if you're downloading them and use them, there may be bugs in them, which you can report back and they will get fixed in the development life cycle. We can get it from the download page. The weekly builds are in the development versions and we can download it from here. And we've got in the assets, Mac versions, Linux and Windows. So the first thing we're gonna start with is errors and warnings. I've set up a sketch that's gonna error. So when we very first start with FreeCAD, let's say I pad this, which I know is gonna error, we get this report view that pops up. We can disable that report view. You notice we've got this window as well. So this is the new notification window. So what we normally do when we come into FreeCAD for the first time is to go to the edit and the preferences and disable this report view. In our tabs at the top, when we start with general, we have a report view tab. And in here, I can show the report view on warnings, on normal errors. I've got the show report view on error here. So we uncheck that and then we can come down to OK. But we also have this new tab called notification area. In here, the notification area, we have errors and warnings. And this is a pop up that will appear. So we OK that. Let's close that panel. And if I click on that sketch and pad that now, we get this message that pops up here rather than the pop-up of the report view. And we can have that instead of the pop-up of the report view, or we can disable this entirely. Once we click, it gets rid of it. If I hit OK, we can see what the problem is. Wire is not closed. And that's only because, going to the sketch, I've got these two points here that are open. We just close that and it will pad. The next change or feature is the image workbench. As you can see, there's no image workbench. Now I've done a video about this before. It now lives in the file import. And we can import our reference image. And we get the image over the left-hand side, double click on it, means that we have everything that was available on the image workbench, including the scaling, which is down the bottom. And we use calibrate to calibrate a length to scale to. There has been numerous changes around the sketcher. And if you look at the top here, you can see that the toolbar only shows the sketch tools that are available when we're not in sketch mode. The minute we go into sketch mode with a new sketch, along one of the planes, then we have the other tools. Let's just escape that. Now we've got the sketch. We have all the sketch tools like mirror sketch, validate sketch, and reorientate sketch. That become enabled to allow you to modify your sketch. The minute we go in, then they will disappear and you'll get your normal sketching tools. Whilst I'm in the sketcher, we have a number of B spline updates. So B spline, if we use the B spline tool, so create a B spline and we have constraints for these. So if I come over to my tools, I've got the auto constraint on and the auto remove redundant constraints. Notice that this selection has moved as well. So in the panel, there used to be these options as separate checkboxes within here. They've moved to this little tool icon here and you can select them from here. So I've got the all the constraints on. So if I create, say, a circle, I can hover over this B spline 
and attach it to there. Or if I do, say, a straight line, I can also attach it with a point on object constraint. This comes in useful when we're creating such things as lofts or sweeps where the geometry is moved in such a way through the sweep or loft, which creates a B spline edge. If I quickly create something in here to demonstrate this, such as this sketch with a helix, so we're going to use this sketch here and from the part workbench, we're going to sweep it along the helix. Create a solid. And let's increase the size of the helix. Like so. This edge here that runs all the way around because it's on a different plane will be pulled in as a B spline. The same as this one. So what we're going to do is pull this into a sketch and create a number of holes along here. To do that, let's come over to the sketcher. Create a new sketch on the XY plane and we're going to pull in this edge. If I do a section view, sketch, view section, we have section view through there. And we can see another feature that is new in FreeCAD 2.1. And that's as we change to the plane, our section view is still split through that section. So you can see the flipping of the bottom and top. And we can get to the geometry behind here and we wasn't able to do this before in previous versions of FreeCAD. We can come to the bottom, we got a section view through the bottom and also from the top, so we can get it from either side. So let's add some geometry to this. Now, this is a B spline. So we're coming to here and try to add a radius to it. It won't allow me. We got the wrong selection. We can't add a radius to that. It's a B spline. And I can add circles to here, and these will be the holes that I want to place through our sweep. So I'm going to extrude these out and add them to our sweep, like so. And we can move these along here to wherever we want. Hit close, come back over to the part workbench. We'll find that sketch that's sitting on the bottom. Click on it, use the extrude 10 millimeters. Let's go a bit further. And then we can take the one we want to keep, the one we want to remove, which is our new extrude, and use the cut. Therefore, we have our holes. Other sketch features are such things as the snapping. So if we come in here, we've got a grid that we can enable. Inside the grid, we have the auto grid spacing and the spacing. So if I change the spacing to say something like 30, we get the grid set to 30. We got the grid auto spacing as well. So when we zoom, you'll see the grid is subdivided. And as we zoom out, you see how that's subdivided there. Also with the grid, we have the snapping. So at the moment, the snap is off. When we click it, the snap is on, it turns green. And inside here, we've got the snap to grid, snap to objects. I'll select snap to grid. And when I create something like a rectangle, you'll see how I start snapping to that grid. Just moving and it's snapping in there. With such things as standard objects, we can set distance. So I can set a distance, say, between these two points with the distance constraint. But we wasn't able to set a distance between, say, a circle and the side of this rectangle. 
now we can by using both of those and setting the distance constraint and OK on that. The split tool has been upgraded. So with the split tool, we can split edges. And now this works with a B spline. So we come out and click the B spline and set a B spline in here. This will have one edge. So if we roll over it, that's one edge. So I close that and roll over it in here. You can see a single edge in here. But with a split tool, we can split this into multiple edges and add control points. So when we split, additional control points are added, allowing us to manipulate this along those control points. And if I close, you can see that we now have multiple edges. If we come back in and look at the other tools available for the B spline, then say I add our arc in here, then I can create this as part of this B spline. And let's use these two points and come up to a new tool, the join curve. This is different from the join curves in the curves workbench. This allows you to join curves together. B spline and the curve are now joined. And we get the B spline manipulation points for that curve. Also, if we take two curves, we can join these into a B spline as well. Again, adding extra vertices to allow for more control of the B spline. An amendment has been made to the Quincy constraint so we can have concentric. So I take this circle and this circle and take the two center points or even the two circles and come over and hit the Quincy constraint. That makes those two circles concentric to each other. This is also the same for arcs and ellipse. The two arcs. Take those two, use a constraint, and they are now coincident to each other via concentric. So I hope that's giving you an overview of some of the changes that's in 0.21. Please remember there are other changes in there, including quite a few improvements to the tech draw workbench. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.